Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about MIDI effects inside of Ableton Live. So in order to use a MIDI effect, uh, we need to have a MIDI channel. And then obviously on that MIDI channel, we then have to have a MIDI instrument. So I've got this MIDI channel here. I'll just delete these other channels so we're not confused. So I've got this one MIDI channel here and you can see that I've got a, uh, a lead loaded in onto that. So that's just an operator patch. I've come into instruments, I've come into operator, I've opened up the synth leads and I've just pulled the first one in there. So let's have a listen to it. Cool, all right, so we've got a sound and we've witnessed that I have absolutely no ability to play the keys, but I can press random buttons and that's cool because I can use MIDI effects to help me play this instrument better. So, uh, we're gonna have a look at arpeggiators. So what an arpeggiator does uh, is if we turn it on, we've got a bunch of different controls in here. So uh, the first control uh, that would be worth talking about is this rate control here. So you can see I've drawn in a big long note and if I turn the arpeggiator off, this is what it sounds like. Cool, it just plays around and it re-triggers. So if I turn the arpeggiator on and I press play, it's re-triggering that note. And the amount that it's re-triggering that note is one over eight. So for this one bar of music, it's gonna re-trigger eight times. So I can come in here and I can adjust that so I can make that one over four. Or I can make that really rapid, one over 32. Um, or I can make it 1 over 16, which would be typically uh, a regular arpeggiated pattern. Cool, so next I've got gate. So this is essentially how much of that sound I'm going to let through. So a lower percentage only lets through a small amount of that sound, and as I open it up, I'm getting more and more of that sound let through every 16th note. Uh, and then next to it, we've got the transpose, the key, the steps, and the distance. So this is all in relation to if we want the notes to start stepping up or stepping down, how far they would step by in distance, and how many times it would step. So uh, we can go ahead and we can say, all right, well, we want the notes to step uh, nine semitones, and we want two steps to occur. Uh, and that will sound like this. Okay, cool. So if I increase the steps, or if I decrease the steps, cool, or if I change the distance, Cool, so you can see already you could start just playing around with this and, and messing with the steps in the distance and you're gonna get some interesting things out of it. Uh, and then in order to ensure that it's musically correct, you can actually get it to lock into a particular um, into a particular key. So I could come here and I could say, all right, well, I'm this, this note here is G, so I'll go, I'm in the key of G and I want G major. So then if I play that, It's gonna keep all of those notes that are being pressed in that musical scale. So I'm not technically musically incorrect. Um, and then uh, another part of the control that we can uh, direct our attention to is the way that the style of the arpeggiator is gonna play. So at the moment it's starting at G, it's moving up five semitones to play the first step, and then it's moving up again another five semitones to play the second step. But what if I wanted it to move up once and then down once? I can go up, down, so then you'll hear the, the change in the pattern. So you can hear the difference in the character. And then we could go completely random. and so on and so forth. Uh, and then if I'm, let's say we'll go um, up and down, 
And if I wanted to actually start playing this arpeggiator, so to speak, I could start mapping some of these knobs to the knobs on my keyboard and I could press notes. Um, I can also press multiple notes on the keyboard to trigger it. So I can go ahead and play just random notes on my keyboard and I can start getting some very interesting things. Uh, so then, in, so that's the, the first MIDI effect and I, I'm not going to talk about each and every single one of them, uh, but I've got this chord generator that comes after the arpeggiator, which is quite interesting. So this is playing um, 16 notes every one bar. It's stepping those uh, notes every time, so it goes, uh, it'll play the root note of G, and then it'll step up five semitones once, and then it'll step up again, five semitones again. And I can actually have each instance of that step play a chord. So if I activate the chord generator, you can see how this works. So the first, uh, the, the, it, it works basically, we're looking at the first note, the second note, the third note, the fourth note, the fifth note, and the sixth note. So at the moment, uh, all, all these guys are all turned off and we've just got this, the shifting of the second note and shifting of the third note. So we've got plus three semitones and then plus five semitones. So if we pr press the keyboard and have a listen to that. So now every time it's triggering notes, it's playing chords and you're able to string along uh, a bunch of different things. So next you could put the velocity on there. So every time the note was being played, the uh, aggressivity or the, or the softness of the note is modulated over time. And you can basically just go wild with all of this sort of stuff. And we could end up doing something like this. So let's go ahead and uh, right click. We'll, we'll select the arpeggiator, we'll hold shift, we'll select the instrument so it selects everything in between we'll right click and we'll go group okay and then we can have this set up so we can say all right well i want to modulate the 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 note length so i can map that to the first macro so now this control changes this sweep so let's play <laughs> Cool, so I can play around with that. I could say, all right, well, I want the steps to be. I want them to be controlled there, and then I want the distance to go to the third one. Cool, so then I'm able to map all of this to my MIDI keyboard. So I could go into MIDI map up here. I can select the gate. I can wiggle this knob. I can select this, wiggle that knob, select this, wiggle that knob, and then unselect MIDI here. Press play. And I could play around with that for days. Uh, so this is how you can start playing with MIDI effects uh, to get something that maybe you, you can't play, maybe you're not quick enough to play. Um, uh, basically you're using the computer to do some of the work for you and that's exactly why we use computers to make music. Um, so this is a little quick introduction to uh, MIDI effects. I hope that was interesting for you and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. You can uh, find my music pages uh, in the links in the comment description below. You can jump on our Discord server. I've got the link for that down below. And I just want to alert you guys about um, Steemit, DTube, and DSound. So if you guys are into cryptocurrency, I've got links for all of that down in the video description. I've got profiles on there, so jump on and follow me. And uh, these platforms look really promising and look like they're really going to change things for content producers. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.